The World Health Organization is urging fully vaccinated people to continue wearing masks as the Delta variant spreads worldwide. This latest warning comes at a time where many countries, including the U.S., have ended mask mandates and most other pandemic restrictions. So Justin Gill is an urgent care nurse practitioner and joins me now to discuss these new guidelines. So this is really interesting to hear that the WHO was saying, no, 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 no. you know, these variants are concerning. You should keep your mask on. But the guidance from the C CDC has not changed. From the CDC, fully vaccinated people can go without a mask, both indoors and outside. Um, do you expect that the recommendations may change from the CDC based on the, the WHO warning? Well, thank you so much, uh, Anne Marie, for having me. Uh, and uh, to answer your question, I would say not necessarily. I think that this is something that we're continuing to look at. Uh, I know that Dr. Fauci has talked about this recently as well. Um, and, you know, the study from Israel specifically, um, as well as some other areas of concern, um, are not the only studies that are out there. From what we know, in areas where people are vaccinated at a higher percentage, the transmission of disease is still fairly low. Um, the ability to shed the virus, if you do, in fact, go through with a breakthrough infection, despite being fully vaccinated, um, if you're in a group with other vaccinated individuals, you can still slow the transmission in that environment. I think that we have to kind of get to this point where we really still realize and take the approach that we've taken over the past year and a half, which is what makes the most sense in the situation that we're in right now. Vaccinated individuals still fairly protected against this new variant, specifically with two doses, not one. And if we can get more individuals vaccinated, then we can truly be able to get the numbers down and be able to slow the transmission so that we have less of these breakthrough infections. All right, so part of the reason the WHO said what they said is because of the new variants, including the Delta variant. Now in California, the number of Delta variant cases increased by 10% since May. Some health experts have said that, you know, the strain, this particular strain could cause outbreaks in certain areas of the country. Um, what regions would you be most concerned about when it comes to this Delta variant? Specifically those regions that are um, vaccinated less than the 70% recommendation. Uh, those areas are at high risk for dealing with these outbreaks. Many of these areas are in rural and underserved areas where access to medical services, if you do indeed contract COVID-19, may not be readily available. So that's what I'm most worried about, is how do we make sure that those vulnerable individuals in those rural areas, in any area that has less than that 70% um, vaccination rate, what are the uh, chances of them uh, developing COVID-19, especially with this variant that is much more transmissible, uh, can cause more severe disease in younger individuals? Um, those are the areas that I am most concerned about. So you just mentioned um, this idea of these breakthrough uh, COVID uh, infections, I guess, right? So in Israel, half of the adults infected with the Delta variant were reportedly fully inoculated with the Pfizer vaccine. These are the kind of stories that just sort of make people confused and skeptical. What does this mean for Americans who got both of the shots? Are, are we protected or are we not protected? Well, from what the evidence shows, the Pfizer vaccine is clinically effective at uh, preventing COVID-19 in anywhere around 89 to 90% of cases based on data that we have from the U United Kingdom. So I would say, yes, you are protected from COVID-19, but what does full protection mean? The vaccines in their clinical trials were 95% effective at that time. That means that 5% of those cases in 5% of the cases, people can still contract COVID-19. From what we know, individuals who are vaccinated and do develop those breakthrough infections usually have very mild illness, less severe disease, and in some cases, less likely to spread to other individuals. What we know is, mm -hmm. is that if you're in an environment where you are vaccinated, but you have constant repeated high exposure to individuals that are positive for COVID-19 that may be carrying a higher viral load, your chance of developing a breakthrough infection in that environment is higher. That's why we need to get more people vaccinated so that way you can bring down the chance of that frequent high-risk exposure. That 
totally makes a lot of sense. It's a numbers game. The more exposure you have, the more there's a possible likelihood that you may find yourself being infected, but not getting anywhere near as sick as you would have if you did not, if you weren't vaccinated. Um, so that brings us to another um, vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson uh, one dose. There's a debate over just how effective the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is against the Delta variant. And just to reiterate, that's the one shot dose. Um, some experts are actually recommending that some people who got the J&J shot, maybe they should get a booster shot with either Pfizer or Moderna. So this would mean mixing the vaccines. And I know this is something that um, in other countries they have done. They're, they're doing it in Canada and their whole thing is, you know, whatever vaccine is available, you go get it, your first and your second shot as soon as you can. And they actually argue that that, that may be uh, offered more protection or stronger protection. You never know. Um, what's your take on mixing vaccines? Um, do, do you think that would help? Well, I think we have to look at that. It, it's something that has been brought up by uh, many different uh, countries as well as healthcare organizations. Mm -hmm. The one thing that we need to pay attention to though is when we're looking at data from clinical trials, we really can only apply those instances to um, situations where the the same you know vaccine is given in two doses. Johnson and Johnson's clinical trial was conducted under its own um, clinical trial and it was one dose. Pfizer and Moderna were two dose series. We do know that with the Delta variant, a two-dose series seems to be much more effective than just a one dose of either vaccine. So because of that, we really do have to look at what is the antibody response, what is the immune response to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Is it adequate and do we need to add on a booster shot with another vaccine? Some countries like that in the UK and, and in other countries that you had mentioned do show some increased efficacy of the vaccines when you have that second dose. Because Johnson & Johnson is that one-time dose, um, that does kind of raise concern, specifically with the Delta variant, that there might be less protection, although I would say not necessarily um, inadequate protection, but comparative to the two-dose series of vaccines, it may not be as effective. I think that's a very good reminder, the difference between inadequate and effective. Uh, you know, it's still going to be effective. Yeah, you know, we're talking about a percentage difference, but that really only matters if you are living in an environment where, like you said, there's repeated exposure, where there are low inoc lower inoculation rates. But in some of the other areas of the country where, you know, you're looking at maybe 70% of eligible people already getting their first shot, you you stand a much lower risk. Um, that's why there isn't a hard and fast rule with any of this stuff. It's not just about the vaccine or about the variant. It's also about the environment and then your own behavior within the environment. All of these things factor in to determine whether or not your risk is lower or higher. Um, Justin, thank you so much. Great having you. Yes, thank you.